So it is 1247, so <clears throat> we will go ahead and get started. Hope everyone had a good lunch and was able to stretch your legs again, get a drink of water, do whatever it is that you do on your breaks. Um, <clears throat> so um, thank you again for everyone who is um, returning to the webinar from the morning session or just joining us this afternoon. Um, my name is Shannon Myers and I'm the Healthy Schools Coordinator at Women for a Healthy Environment. And I will be presenting on our Healthy Schools Recognition Program, which is just one of the uh, many programs that uh, we, WHE, we offers to K through 12 schools. Uh, next slide, please. So um, the purpose for this uh, presentation is not only to um, share with you, the audience, some of the uh, programs that our Healthy Schools program has to offer, but to also serve as a, um, a brief introduction to our panel that will be happening after this at 1.15, which will cover um, uh, learning from experts and innovators award-winning initiatives uh, in PA about green ribbon schools. So I'll be touching a little bit on what the green ribbon program is, the three pillars that make up the green ribbon program, uh, an introduction to the healthy school recognition program, how you become eligible for that, and then finally a conclusion and some time at the end for questions. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So what is the Green Ribbon Program? The Green Ribbon Program, which you can see on the left, that's the, um, the logo for the program, is a public engagement initiative for school sustainability that is structured as a federal recognition award. Um, so it highlights schools, school districts, uh, post-secondary institutions, and early learning centers on different um, sustainability practices that uh, enhance health and the performance of the, um, the system. So the, uh, this celebrates the institutions and it also brings more attention to the work that they've been doing by celebrating that. And this, is a, this award is a one-time recognition of the institution's progress uh, in the award's <clears throat> three sustainability focused pillars. And so this award, like I said, can only be you're only eligible to receive it once and uh, the award is um, awarded uh, once a year. And it does not uh, convey any federal funding to states, districts, schools, or anything of that sort. Next slide, please. So the three pillars, uh, this will be the first time you hear it today, which will be from me. And you will probably hear it a few more times after me when our experts um, discuss it in the panel. So uh, just to keep that in mind, the three pillars are the idea that the, um, <clears throat> the, the sustainability is divided into three main sections. So pillar one is to reduce environmental impact and costs. Pillar two is to improve the health and wellness of students and staff. And pillar three is um, effective, and environmental, effective environmental and sustainability education. So it's the idea of our this whole school approach, which I'll get into in a couple of slides. Um, but it focuses not just on the environment, but on how that impacts our health and how that impacts our education. And so really taking like a, a whole a holistic um, approach to this. Oh, next slide, please. Thank you. So to um, get into it a little bit, that's a little bit of a preview of what the um, the Green Ribbon Program is. And Women for a Healthy Environment, as the Healthy Schools Coordinator, we have our own kind of version of this program called the Healthy School Recognition Program. And the Healthy School Recognition Program is a program that we have created to help school buildings, school districts, to uh, take the steps to work towards becoming a green ribbon program, or sorry, a green ribbon school or district. Um, so the goal of this program is to, again, recognize and celebrate public and private schools across Pennsylvania that have taken the steps to become a, to have a green and healthy learning environment in their school. And this program also helps take the steps again to become a green ribbon uh, school. 
And so any uh, public or private K through 12 school or school district in our region of Western and Central Pennsylvania is open to this award. Um, so it's a little bit different from the Green Ribbon Program where the Green Ribbon Program is a little more expansive and for, um, <clears throat> for universities and early learning centers and also schools, this specific program in this case is just for K through 12 public or private schools in our region. Next slide, please. So the different levels of the recognition program are divided to make the process not seem so overwhelming and so uh, daunting. So to in order to, um, to sign up and be part of the program, uh, the first level is just becoming an emerging school. So that means that you just do one thing for your school that uh, allows you to take a step towards becoming a healthy school by participating in this checklist, which I'll go into in a couple in a couple more slides. So just one thing, not hard, just one thing. You're probably already doing it and you don't even know it, which is pretty cool. The next role, or the, sorry, the next level is the honor role, which is the completion of at least 15 activities listed on the report card. So again, not too many things. Um, you know, it's just the next level up to continue your uh, commitment to becoming a healthy, a part of the healthy school recognition program. And then next we have the high honor roll, which is just elevating that to 30 activities. And then the next is the highest honor roll, which is the completion of at least 75 acti activities listed on the report card. And so uh, these different levels, again, are to make this baby steps achievable, obtainable, not too overwhelming. Um, and by the time that a school would complete the 75 activities, the idea is that you will be prepared and have um, you know, the, the activities and the program set in place and uh, completed or in process to then be ready and successful to apply to become a green ribbon school or district. Next slide, please. And then can you click on this link, please, Ava? So this link uh, opens up to the healthy school uh, report card. So like I said in the, <clears throat> in the last slide, there are um, the different levels of the recognition program of doing one thing, 15, 30, 75 things. Uh, and so Ava's scrolling through this right now. So you can see that there are different categories of our healthy school recognition program. And this list is big. It is not meant to to scare anyone, to for me to say like, you have to do every single one of these things. This is just purely a list of ideas to help you get thinking about this, help you get you in the mindset of um, just some ideas of, of what uh, you want to do for your school. So these are divided into different categories. So you can see on the second page of this digital brochure, we have water, air quality, waste and recycling, energy, health and well-being, transportation and school grounds. And then on the uh, first page of the brochure, if you can scroll up, Ava. Thank you. We also have uh, curriculum integration, community engagement, professional development, sharing and sharing successes and learn lessons learned, category planning, and school philosophy and culture. So like I said, it's not um, a program that's meant to say, okay, you have to change all your cleaning products overnight, or you know, you're only allowed to eat the, the food in the cafeteria that's grown outside by the playground. It's not a program like that. It really is a holistic approach to um, get thinking about where are the different areas in your school related to professional development, to curriculum, to cleaning, all those different things for you to start making uh, healthier and greener choices. So just for example, um, can you scroll down to the second page, Ava? Thank you. So just for example, um, under the waste and recycling category, um, some of these include just, do you have recycling in your school or district for paper? Most schools have that, most classrooms have that. So if that's something that you have, you're already an emerging school. You just have to tell me that that's what you wanna do and I will happily sign you up. Um, there are other uh, activities listed on this brochure that you know 
maybe you haven't thought about or maybe um, are uh, you're, are worth exploring for you. So one of them on the school grounds category is installing a rain garden. Maybe that's something that uh, has been on the wish list at the school, and this is the perfect excuse to make that happen if that's something that you've been working towards. Some of them are really um, kind of more like curriculum abstract things, uh, which is on the first page. But I remember one of them specifically is having at, is for students to have access to. Um, to books either in the classroom or in their library that have to do with you know climate change the environment garden sustainability things like that and so when uh a school or a district is going through this um this process basically what will happen is you will go through this we'll talk through it together and you will just either provide it can be in person or a uh, digital session but you will basically show me, you know, okay, you'll say, yes, I'm composting my food in organic waste. And I'll say, okay, how are you doing that? And you'll either show me in person or show me a picture of, you know, your composting site, whether that's in the cafeteria or on your school's campus, things like that. So can you go back to the uh, presentation, Ava? Thank you. And then go to the next slide. One second, let me figure out how to get this back to full screen. There we go. <clears throat> Perfect, thank you. So in conclusion, and I have a couple more slides if, if the audience is quiet that we can talk about, but um, in conclusion, the Green Ribbon Award is obtainable. There are a lot of different um, uh, routes that can be taken to achieve the Green Ribbon Award a lot of different activities that can be done um, but it is there's no expectation of something of that a school or a district will do this overnight um, there's no expectation uh, or or anything like that that one person will make this whole thing happen and that would be crazy if there was because this is a lot of work um, so the reason i say that too is because my position as the healthy schools coordinator is to be that assistant to help you work towards uh, the different levels in this program and also to help answer any questions along the way to help you develop any of these projects different things like that uh, secondly the healthy school recognition program can serve as a pathway to take steps towards the green ribbon program so you can jump right into the green ribbon program and you know focused on the three pillars, but if you're in uh, the central region of Pennsylvania or southwestern Pennsylvania, we really encourage you to utilize our program and to um, uh, take advantage of also using me as a resource uh, to help you develop, you know, the curriculum programs, different things like that. And so, uh, thirdly, uh, we also has um, other programs to help schools earn this recognition program. So one of the categories was um, was cleaning products and things like that. So if you're a facility director and you're interested in um, changing some of your products to uh, be healthier, greener, safer, and you also want to be a green ribbon uh, school or district, we can knock out two stones or kill to whatever that saying is, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, knock two things out at the same time. <laughs> uh, and finally, um, you know, I've been talking a little bit about this program, but uh, we will in the coming up panel in about 15 minutes, we will hear from Green Ribbon Award recipients who will really be able to shed a light on how they, what steps they took to become an award-winning school, the, um, some of the, uh, ways that they work through their problems if they had any and just the um overall benefit of becoming a green ribbon school so now i will open it up for any questions i see that there is a question here it says do these lists change over time as more information and data comes out can schools petition to add items to these lists i would say uh so i'm fairly new to my position i started at women for a healthy environment in march of 2022 so i will say that this is the version of the list that i'm working off of um 
But if there's something that you want to do that is not on this list, you can absolutely uh, tell me about a program or a project that you're doing. And if it's really good, I'll probably try to add it to the list if you're okay with that <laughs> so that other schools can do it too. So it's definitely kind of like a, a, working, a working program, a working list. Um, it's not strict, but you know, the idea is that we want you to accomplish a certain amount of things in each category so that when it is time for you to apply to be a green ribbon school, you're set up for success and you will achieve it on the first try. So I hope that answered your question. And Shannon, while we're waiting for other people to ask questions, I just wanted to ask, um, would you mind expanding a little bit upon uh, what else the Healthy Schools PA program does? I know we offer a lot of really incredible resources to school personnel, and I was curious if you could expand on that outside of the Healthy School Recognition Program. Yes, so if you can move one slide ahead. Sorry, two slides ahead. <laughs> So one of the programs that we also offer is our EPA Air Quality Flag Program. And this is a program that is has been established by the EPA. Um, and the idea is that, you know, we've been talking a lot about um, this morning and now into the afternoon about air quality. And what does that mean? And what does it mean in our region? And what impact does that have on our students and our community? And so, especially in the Pittsburgh area, um, we have really good and really bad air quality days. And so the idea of this program is that you, the school or district, uh, receives a set of color coordinated flags, as you can see on the left hand side of the image. Um, and air quality is then um, goes with different levels, or sorry, the color of the flags then goes with the different levels of the air quality. So a good air quality day would mean green flag, a not so good air quality day would be a red flag or an orange flag, um, so on and so forth. And so we WHE has um, sets of these flags to give to schools. And the idea is that we uh, encourage you to put them on your flagpole outside of the school so that uh, your students, bus drivers, community members can see these flags and say, oh, okay, today's a good air quality day. Today's a unhealthy air quality day for sensitive groups. And just kind of start to be aware of that and start to, to notice when, when the air quality changes. And so this isn't just to notify the community members, but also for our sensitive uh, population groups in school communities. So if there are students that have chronic asthma, you know, and it's an unhealthy air quality day, maybe, uh, you know, you sit out of outside gym that day, or you don't go outside for recess, or um, maybe, you know, if it's a really warm day and the air quality is unhealthy, you know, we ask teachers to not open the windows to let in the fresh air that looks really nice outside, but can really impact a student's ability to learn in the classroom. Um, so the, and then, uh, in addition to that at airnow.gov, uh, you, the, the EPA also has a set of, um, curriculum that, teachers or uh, school personnel can use to educate students about not just the program, but about air quality, how that impacts your health, um, so on and so forth. So if you're a school or a district and you want a set of these flags, please reach out. I have lots of them. I'm happy to um, to hand them out to you know help you find a good place to hang them up. Um, I will also mention that there are some schools that I've worked with in our area that, um, you know, there's been uh, concerns about, you know, vandalization with the flags, you know, teenagers taking them, things like that. So another workaround for that is to um, have the suction cup hooks on like the front attendance office or, you know, the front door or something, somewhere where everyone can see them and just hang them up and change them each day. And so then people ask like, okay, well, who's going to do that? And it, this is not a program to um, add any additional work to one person, you know, make it an inconvenience, anything like that. 
uh, a lot of schools that I've been working with have actually, I've actually partnered with the special education teachers and they have small classroom groups that have now, uh, they're in charge of changing the flag every day. So every morning they get in their classroom, they check the air quality, they take a walk down to the, you know, the front office or to the flag outside, they change the flag, they put it up and they love it. It's, you know, a sense of responsibility for them. They're helping serve their school community and it's no additional work to anyone who, you know, might not have the capacity to do that. So there's always, the reason I say that is because there's always a workaround um, to do programs like these. These are not programs to make anyone's life any harder. They're really to help uh, you and the school community that you serve. And then if you can go to the next slide, Ava. So the second biggest program that we run uh, at our organization is called our Thousand Hours a Year program. And our Thousand Hours program is a grant funded program through the Heinz Endowment, uh, where we heard from Phil this morning. And uh, they fund free lead and radon testing and remediation. So if you are in a school setting, you probably know, and especially facility directors, you probably know that lead testing is required each year. And as of right now, radon testing is not. And I always like to tell people, you know, asking if lead is worse than radon or vice versa is asking if, you know, cancer is worse than a heart attack. Like they're both bad and we should be taking care of, um, of both of those issues. So uh, if you are in, um, again, in our region of Pennsylvania, Southwest PA, Pittsburgh, um, we encourage you to go to the thousand hours a year website. Uh, to learn more about, you know, lead and radon. It's very, in our specific region of Pennsylvania, it's very um, apparent, uh, specifically in our region. Lead and radon is naturally occurring. It is everywhere, but more so in our area. And there is a job form online that you can fill out. It asks for some simple information, like what school or school district you're from, uh, your contact information, the square footage of the building, how many students you serve, different things like that. And um, then we, you send that back to me. I get in contact with you. We uh, create a grant agreement that says, you know, we can allot X amount of money to do this testing. And then I connect you with um, some of the local businesses that we use in Pittsburgh that uh, do our testing and remediation specifically in school buildings. So we have a couple companies that we've worked with with a long time uh, that do this. They know the drill. They know, you know, the learning environment is very, um, uh, is a very important and they try their best to, you know, come after school early in the morning to not disrupt the day. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much the, the program. And again, you can uh, fill out that job form online. It's pretty simple, straightforward. And again, if you're interested in that, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to set up any meetings with anyone to walk through that program, or I'm sorry, that job form with you. If you feel more comfortable with that, um, or if you want to do it on your own, that's great too. And I see there's some questions in the chat, so I will um, go to those. So yes, Michelle had shared um, solarforallschoolspa.org. That's a great uh, um, website that she shared. And Lorna also posted that air flags can be hung in a prominent place in the school or advertised on the school video system. That's a really good idea too. I remember in school, you know, you see the same 10 slides on the TV when you're sitting in the cafeteria at lunchtime. You know, one of those slides can be about air quality or what the air quality is that day. Uh, and Michelle also put the link to the airnow.gov air quality flag program as well. And Amy, I see your question about uh, getting the air quality flags. Yep, I, Ava, can, if you can move back to my contact information um, on one of those PowerPoint slides, there it is. You can shoot me an email, tell me how many sets of flags that you need, and uh, we will make it happen. And if there are any other questions, we have a few more minutes before we will move into our uh, final panel for the day.
I'll also reiterate that um, we also offer um, a variety of uh, school curriculum. So various science takeout kits, things that have to do with, again, lead, radon, air quality, environmental health, um, uh, school gardens, things like that. Um, we also offer some guidance to facility directors about uh, green cleaning products, what we recommend, what we don't recommend. Um, and pretty much if there is something that you want help with, you want some resources on that has to do with environmental health, you just reach out to me. And if I don't have the answer, I will do my best to find someone who does and um, help you help you work towards getting those programs started and, and taking control of those initiatives. All right, so I think those are all the questions. Uh, again, if you come up with something later or just want to have a chat, feel free to reach out to me. My email's on the screen. Um, you can also find my contact information on the Women for a Healthy Environment website as well. So thank you all for, again, coming back after lunch and taking some time to uh, listen to our programs. And just please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. I'm happy and excited to uh, help schools work uh, towards these